Hello everyone Hello. and welcome to Studio R12 Stencils and we are going to do some DIY question and answer. I'm Patty. I'm Carrie. Hi. Hi. Happy Tuesday. Um, I hope the weather is treating you right. It's beautiful here. Well, it's cool. It's cool. But it feels good. It cool. Feels it's like spring. It's spring. Oh, what? It's nice yeah. enough to like have the windows open in spring yes. kind of weather. Yeah, it's lovely. We have some amazing lessons for you guys today. Um, we're going to crack out a bunch of different techniques. So if you've got other crafters that you haven't shared with, make sure that you mm -hmm. give them a little share and let them know that we're doing cool stuff over here. Yeah, okay. welcome. We have some really fun stuff. We do fun stuff all the time. We do. Yeah. We actually said that we were like a little um, science experiment lab yeah. today. We were Patty doing was, all kinds of different Patty things. Patty was doing science. Um, <laughs> We have a brand new product that we have introduced today. And today during our video, we're going to tell you four ways that you can use it around your home or to make it as a gift. But before we get into that, let's talk about all the places we are, all the things that we're doing. Mm. You can find us pretty much anywhere on the Facebook? internet. Yes. Studior12.com, yes. first and foremost. Okay. Go because there. Because you want to go there and sign up for our newsletter. Mm -hmm. um, we do an amazing job of educating and informing, so make sure that you get that one done. If you want to have the skinny on things before anybody else gets the skinny on them, when we say something like these brushes are in stock, we might say it first on our email because those are our loyal stencil yep. fans. Um, and so you want to be on that list. Yes, absolutely. And when you go to studior12.com, if you are not already on the newsletter, there will be a fun little spinny wheel and you can put your email into that and maybe get a coupon code. Maybe. Um, but... What's the fun in spinning there? if you don't get a coupon? Yeah, if you don't get a prize. Yeah. So you're, you'll probably get a prize, and then that Crap will put you on the list. But we're also on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We are now mm -hmm. on Twitch, which is a live streaming service. Yeah. We are on Instagram. We are on Pinterest. We are on TikTok. <sighs> and a lot of times we are putting different things on every single one of those. Yeah, yeah. We um, we really, really, when we, um, we rebuilt our building here... Um, Two and a half years ago, something mm -hmm. like that. And when we did that, we created a good filming space with good lighting and all the studio effects and all the things. Um, Steve is um, in charge of all of that and has led us well. And so because of that, we can do the things. Yeah. And this week, we um, actually went to Carrie's Garden. Yeah, this week for our video for Saturday for YouTube, we go on a field trip, so we do a little painting in the studio, and then we head out to my garden, and we watch the video today. And, and meet the cat. And Oh, you get to see my kitties. Yes, it's so cute. Um, it's, it's super fun. It's one of, I think, my favorite videos that we've done, so yeah. make sure that super you neat. check out our YouTube channel on Saturday. The video was released around 6, 6.30 in the morning, but you don't have to be up then to watch it. That's just yeah. when it's available. And how many of you guys, I want to show of hands here um we have got the gardening bug in this building um it's a contagious little it thing. is and we have got garden 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 and we're all gardening for different reasons but it's it's been fun because every almost every single person is like okay even elaine she said i threw i had a sweet cantaloupe and i threw some seeds out in the side yard that stays moist and we'll see what happens yep. so even elaine joined us so she's part of the garden club now <laughs> yeah. So speaking of YouTube, let me, I put this out of reach. Last week on YouTube, we released a super fun project for a DIY pet leash holder. Yep. But the thing that I want to make sure that everyone is thinking about when we are releasing videos, so our newsletter and our video were about a DIY pet leash holder. However, in the video, Patty shows you how to make a thing to hold your coffee mugs, mm -hmm. something that you could use to hang your hats or your keys or your jackets. Like, yes, yeah, the and theme this of, yeah. can turn this way. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have hooks on it. It can just be a really cool put together sign. So this is a project more than anything. It's a project to tell you how to put together dimensional lumber, yes. which is the boards that you get from the hardware store. Um, so this is furring strips. These are whatever they are, three, four by ones or something like that, three by ones, I don't know. 
um, but measure them, find out. But you can use your scrap wood, barn wood, and you can put it together. And so we hammered in these supports. You can put those supports on the back. You can hang it this way, you can make it this way, you can make it really long, you can make it wide, whatever you wanna do. Um, you could stagger the boards, but it was, it was how, it was the lesson in how to put it together. Yeah. And, not, and then, of course, there's a lesson in drop shadow and then what to do about the roughness of dimensional lumber. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's a lot of other lessons. It's not a pet lesson, Correct. it's a all the other things lesson. Like today, today is going to be 12 things. You're going to get 12 lessons out of this and it's yeah. going to be 12 kind of unusual things that sure. are all connected by the subject. Right. And um, with this, we also have a free digital download mm -hmm. of yeah. how to build this and put it together and what size boards. Yeah, so it has I the should, cut list in yep, it. And share it the has the, that. What size nails. That was really... So we go ahead of you guys and we do the homework for you. So when we were putting this together, finding the right kind of nail. Yes. Um, some are pin nails, some are wire nails, some are blah, 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 construction nails. There's so <laughs> many different kinds. And so what we did is we went, we have a hardware store right next door. And um, we went to the hardware store, I bet you 20 times, and bought 20 different kind of <laughs> fasteners. And we played. We did. We want screws. Did we want nails? Did we? Would it hold together? Do we do it in three spots, four spots? You know, all the magic touch things. And so we discover what works. We test it. I spend a lot of time breaking things. Like I make people mad sometimes. Yeah, so, sometimes it's yeah. really sad. But if I can break it, then that means you can break it accidentally. And so I want to know that it's as strong as it can be. Yeah. So we do a lot of that kind of stuff. We're R and D yeah. central. We are R and D central. Yeah. Hey. All right. Um, let's set yeah. that down. All <laughs> right. So you want to show off our? I'm, um, so we're not going to tell you exactly what we're doing on Saturday. Just know that we're going to be in the garden, and you'll see it Super Saturday. Um, but it is fun, and you see my cats. <laughs> Her so, cats are really adorable. So today we introduced, if you are on our newsletter, you have already seen our brand new product. Ta-da! It is our kitchen conversion chart. These are so, so popular right you now. You want to talk? You know, the, the world is weird. There are trends going on right now that I would not have ever expected to see, and this would be one of them. Um, there is art that you put these, you put them on your like dining room wall. They look fabulous. Like, I'm talking like really fabulous. It's super like, I don't know, like 1930s cool. You know, it's just a really neat look. So today we are going to show you how to paint this, but um, I do not have a surface that I want to paint on that is exactly the size of this. So we're going to show you how to use parts of this mm -hmm. and um, what that means. So our surface today, which leads to a little bit of an announcement. Yes, so in the newsletter today, we did announce that we were releasing this product. However, for you guys here on Facebook, we have a flash sale. Mm -hmm. So we are also adding to our sale today the Anyway Tray and the Anyway Tray Insert. And no. they are both $10 off. Which and is a great deal. They're already marked through, so I will share the links for you. And that sale is just going to be today, um, May 16th, 2023. Yeah, and so it is to be noted that you um, this will come to you unassembled. It has a tab construction. Um, give me that tissue box, please, Steve. Um, it has a tab construction just like our tissue box, um, and we've shown it how to put it together and stuff. Um, but it does these little tabs which seem irritating, but you know, once you paint it, um, it doesn't show. And a lot of people, um, especially our younger crowd here at work, um, they all like the visibility of the constructy parts because they're super symmetrical and look really good. But um, we painted this tray black. And one thing that I wanna show, can I jump in? Go for it. Okay, so I painted the tray, but I wanted to leave the bottom blank because I wanted to show you how ding dang diddly great these foam brushes are and I want to show you why um, we're gonna just do a quick little thing on this when you're painting these and by the way I want to also add 
Um, when we first designed this tray, we put it through such a strength test. So this is a very strong product. Um, so we definitely, we had people standing on it. Um, so it's a super strong thing. So you could put your trays of food and all that. You could put it on your, on your, um, your ottoman or something. If you have a big round one and you need something stable, you can do that. So um, super great. The thing that is cool about this brush is the support goes all the way to the very tip. So the very tip doesn't have it, but right here is where that goes to. So it's a super firm applicator. And this is one that has also, we're doing a test on another one. This one also has that plastic um, support in it as well. We'll let you know more about this one later. And then when you are painting this, this brush is so special because a regular brush, paintbrush like this guy, gets just a little bit floppy. And this guy really, really holds like a point. Okay, so when I'm going into, and I'll show you down here. Steve, can you get this line right here? When I'm going in here, I can just use that foamy edge and it just kind of gloms right on in there. And then I can smear it and get it smooth, smooth with a V. And it just does such a great job of doing thin coats and just really fine. And it is such a great applicator. And I think, what are they on the website? I will look. Like two They're bucks? Not, not very I don't know. There's something, something affordable. Um, anyway, so I always kind of offload when I'm going to go next to an edge like this. Um, they are $1.99. It says right now we are currently sold out, so I will oh. check for that as soon as we get off the live. And if we do yeah. have them in stock, I will update you. Yeah, this is, um, so we're not out of our supply chain anythings right now. I don't know why, but things just keep going out. Um, it's it's kind of crazy. It's just been, it's been a, just a weird world last little bit. Anyway, I'm not going to paint the whole bottom of this because I just wanted to show you how neat this brush is to tuck in. And then when we're done with this brush, just tuck it down in the water. And then we discovered the beauty of a tiny, um, this is probably five or six inches across, um, a tiny barrel, a bucket of water instead of the big ones we were using. Yes. Because the brushes stay, Steve, I'm gonna show you here. And I'm gonna, sh I have a they video of why. stay <laughs> submerged, submerged, submerged. Tiny bucket video. I'm going to share that right now, and I'm going to show you why we like the tiny bucket. We so learned the hard way of using the big bucket versus the tiny bucket. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we are going to... Oh, one last thing on this. So what is cool about the Anyway tray is you can, number one, you can paint your base um, with... I love the idea of putting like a monogram in a family name through it. And then that's your always on display yeah. piece. So whatever you want on there, like, like life is yours, do what you want. So, but then you can put these inserts in. And so any way that you do it, you can paint on both sides. You can paint on this, you can paint on this. You can stack them up, I'm coming here. So you can stack them up. They're thin enough to put them multiples in the tray. You can do Christmas, fall, whatever season you want to do, and you can store the different surfaces. So that is why it's called an anyway tray, because you can do all the seasons, and that is magic. <clears throat> so put him there, and then we're going to go over here on the black. I'm going to show you about positioning. So one thing that we saw was that if you have this on here, it does fit completely like that okay so i could paint that on there i don't like a tray that handles this way with an up and down art so i wanted my art to be sideways so what we're going to do is talk about how you would do that so we're going to take this and we're going to position it in the middle and we are only going to do the top bit and so this is our conversion and what's neat about this is then it's handy it's in your tray and you have it to reference whenever you need it. You could put it on the base of the tray. You could put it under. You could put under. Um, if you were making, so I have five sons, um, and so I have five daughter-in-laws now. 
And that's where the studio are 12, we're Rawlinson's, and that we have 12 of us all together with married people. It's kind of where that name came from in the Bible as well. But um, anyway, so because of that, um, it, daughter-in-laws in my Christmas time always get the same gift. So they got green stocks mm -hmm. two years ago. Um, last year, like the year before, they got all um, knife cutlery holders that were engraved with their initials and stuff like that. So it was super fun. This would be a great anyway tray with their kind of art on one side and the conversion on the other yeah. side. It'd be and such a nice we'd daughter like to, let, Let's hear from you. If you guys have painted these as gifts, mm -hmm. let us know in the comments. I painted one for my mother-in-law nice. and painted it black, gave it to her for Christmas. They spend a lot of time like eating in front of the... Um, Eating in front of the TV, watching a race yeah. or whatever. So now I have endless gifts to get her. Well, and that's what's great is so you paint the tray once, right? That's your Christmas present or birthday present or whatever. And then you just mail in the next piece or give over yep. the next piece that's painted. And then you can paint one for you and paint one for them. Yep. And then you have multiple uses for your stencils, which I love. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do when we are getting ready to use just a portion, we wanna see how far to our lettering. It's about two inches, it's a scant two. Let's see, that is right at two, so we'll raise it up a little bit. And then I'll make sure that I'm basically balanced from side to side to quarter. One more time, I'm way over this way. We had someone on YouTube, our friend Jaina said, I want them, I want one in every size <laughs> of the conversion chart. So oh, nice. with this conversion chart, we do only have two sizes and yep. the 18 by 13 is our smallest. And that is because the details the detail. on this are teeny tiny, yeah. even on the 18 inch, there's a lot of things on there. And so once we get into smaller, you can't, it, bridge you can't it. read it. Yeah, um, you can't bridge it, you can't read it. It's a problem. So there are two sizes, but the 18 by 13 is the smallest here. But you can use the portions of it. So mm -hmm. you can decide what amount, like you might just want this amount of detail. I mean, this goes into your gallons, your quarts, your pints. Um, I, I use this, I do a lot of canning and a lot of gardening put up things. And I use this portion of things all the time. So that is like whatever you use, include that. I yep. like it. Okay, so we've got that basically centered. And so we're not going to, so this is where we wanna be like, what are we gonna do? We're gonna include the line with the greenery, um, the little decorative bits, the kitchen conversion, and we're just gonna include that piece right there. And we're gonna go into black and white. Um, if you are wondering about trends and you don't have time to do the trend research, um, black and white, White and black, black and white are That's such it. a big deal. Yep. It, I don't know why. I didn't make the trend. All I did was observe the trend. Probably the most timeless trend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you can't really kind of almost go wrong with that <laughs> unless you were in the, um, the Tuscan era. That was uh, definitely not a black and white era. But black and white comes and goes. So we're going to go in our brush. We're in a dome brush. We're going to offload our paint. If you don't want to bleed under when you are... Um, doing your stenciling, then you want to make sure that you always offload. Offload, offload, offload. That's, I don't think we can say it enough. I think people wax over it sometimes. All right, and then one of the things I like to do more than anything, I do not like stippling, which is where you pounce up and down. It gets kind of exhausting. So I like to swirl. So you just take gentle pressure. If you notice, Steve, I don't, can you at all get my brush as it's doing it and see that I'm not pushing on that. It's not splaying out. It's not doing anything. It is just coasting over the top. And I'm just doing little swirly motions. The first coat's gonna be really dusty. It's not gonna matter. So then I pick up paint and oh no, I have to come offload again. You have to offload. To not bleed under, you have to offload. Everybody repeat after me, offload. <laughs> offload. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay yes i've seen tv before all right so i want to know what you guys are painting right now we are in we're may we're may and 
Are you painting for a garden? And if we were to do the back side of this tray, would you, what would you paint next? What would be your, your choice? Because that is interesting. I think we need to paint the back side. When Jaina said, um, she was the one who said that she was going to get all the sizes. Yeah. She said, I love the idea of using portions of it on smaller projects. The two sizes give tons of options for yes. different projects like pot holders, trivets, tea Ooh. towels, cutting boards, wooden spoons, spatulas, on and on. And let me tell you. Can so, she come be on our yes, design team? if you can come. Um, so the funny thing, we had four different things written down to talk to you about today. And three of the four, our stencil fans have already discussed in the comments that so they good. are on the same wavelength that we are. I love with it. What you're going to paint this on, how you're going to paint it. So we're excited for that. Um, Carol says she's painting a butt ton of leaners <laughs> for craft shows. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, hopefully, Carol, you took advantage of our top porch sale that we had over the weekend. Carol's gonna love our new stuff. <laughs> it's and, so good. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys, we had a couple of new top porch signs that are designed for later seasons mm -hmm. that were put on my desk. <clears throat> And they're week. beautiful. And they're, they're gorgeous. Yeah. All right, let's take a little sneak peek. So this is one layer, and look at how great. You know what? I don't even know that we need to go further. Okay, and I'm going to chalk hold. This is like how you get a chalky look. I'm going to hold this down so I can put it back down if I want. And done. Ta -da! I love it. One coat. Okay, so look at how nice and just perfect that is. Ta -da. Ta -da. Okay. I haven't taken something home in a while. This, one. Ah, this may be this it. This might go with me. Okay, so then you pop that in there, and now you have your kitchen conversion oh, wow. tray. And then oh. on the back, you paint the other half of it. What did that take? Ten seconds? Yeah, not very long. I mean, really fast. All right, so let's talk about what people are painting. Yes. So Kat is painting stepping stones. Kat. Marilyn is painting a birdhouse. Nice. Stepping stones. Kat, where'd you get your stepping stones? Yes, let us know. We've had people asking where mm -hmm. to get them. They're hard to get. Um, Donna says, when I am doing a white on black, I will use a light gray for my first mm -hmm. coat. And yes, then do perfect. two coats of white to get a nice, crisp, bright white. Yeah. So I think it's the difference between, like, this would be, um, and the reason I stopped is this would be your chalky look. And she's exactly right. If I was going to do that, I would do a couple more coats, and I might start with the gray, switch to the white, just to get a good coverage. Um, Carol says she did take advantage of the sale, and she's going to be painting fall and winter leaners come June or July. So she hopes that we're coming out with new stencils. Mm, we, we typically oh. release fall and Christmas around July. Yeah. So we, we have like to, to work. Stuff. We work for you guys, um, and so yes, we're mm -hmm. in July for you, so that you have the most up to date that you can possibly have, and still have time to paint it to sell. Yes, if you are a person that sells. Um, okay, I have a couple more. Christine says she's going to start a port. She was. She was. I'm going to say was going to start a port sign this week, but now she wants to paint this. So. <laughs> um, Let's see. Cindy is selling rounds to sell. Oh, yeah, the rounds, you guys. Um, pool clothes sign, turkey napkin holders, 15-inch rounds, welcome round with sunflowers and daisies, wood rounds. So we're still doing a lot of wood rounds. Um, Did you guys pick up on the fact that the rounds were... Um, sorry, my eye has been itching all week. Um, the rounds at... It's at Home Depot. We are in... What are we? May? I don't even mm -hmm. know the date. May... 16th, May 16th, 2023. Um, Home Depot is your bomb for that. Those rounds are like $8 and they're thick and they're 18 inches. Go get them while they have them. We think that they mispriced. Don't, I mean, don't, tell them. Don't, don't make any... Um, Kat says she got her stepping stones at Lowe's. Okay. So we had someone ask where we found ours. We got ours at our local hardware store. We don't have a... We don't have a Lowe's. We don't have a, we don't have a, a big box. box. We don't have a big box <laughs> hardware store. It we takes do have us, a Walmart, but that doesn't Walmart, count. But yeah. it takes us about an hour to get to a big box store, yeah. so yeah. ours came from a, a small a Yeah, small a little mom and, mom and pop kind of thing. All right, <clears throat> next. Let's talk about... Um, I think, actually, I'm going to jump to, if you wanted to have this super handy, 
and you have a screwdriver, you could take the door off of your cabinet and you could put this on the inside of your cabinet door. Um, I've got a spice drawer that um, I do a lot of fermented foods and I've got a, inside my door, I've got a salt, a salt and water um, levels kind of conversion chart for myself. Um, and I'll tell you, it's priceless to have that just right in that door. And so you could paint that right over the top of your finish that is on your cabinet and you can just totally use the paints that we have and then go over it with a little varathane or a wax and you're not going to rub on the inside of your cabinet so you don't have to worry about it being too durable but you could skip all of the extra fluff and you could put just the details that you wanted and that is number two way to use and that it. was one of the very first comments we received yeah. was inside paint it on the inside of your cabinet inside the cabinet door yeah, okay we have a conversion chart in our cabinet but it doesn't look as good as that one. i know so ours now looks paint better. Over it. <laughs> i bet yours is maybe taped in it's a little it's, it's, yeah it's, a little it's okay but um but how fun to have this be just something finished if you paint and you're a stencil fan like right. why not like flaunt it i know well and i have yeah. a cabinet my um my tea and herb cabinet mm. is right beside my yeah. stove, so I mm. could paint it on the inside of that and just have it open. I know, and that'd be great. Like, here's maybe the that, thing. Maybe, maybe that'll be a quick video. Oh, that'd be good. I can, um, sneak it past my husband. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on this one, we're gonna get into digital media. I'm gonna go into my phone. I'm going to pull up a picture which came right up. I'm very impressed with myself. I found this on um, Pinterest and it's just a pretty wood grain. Okay, so we're hanging on. Okay, and when we look at this, uh, what I did to pick out the colors that I was going to use was I looked at the light swath that was there and I kind of isolated it and decided that it was number 79. And so I'm gonna show you how to do some wood grain. Um, and it's just such a fun technique. So, and then I love how this is done with like a really dark brown instead of a black or something. So we're gonna do wood grain on this panel. I'll keep this here so I can look at it and then we're gonna get, um, a brush so we've got our polyfoams um when these are back in stock um just go ahead and buy 10. it's what would that be that'd be 20 bucks yeah um i'm not like it's fine don't buy 10 whatever you want to do but i'm just saying you're gonna want to have a bunch of these because they wash up really good even when they are I had one that was old and dirty. Oh, it was probably i think i used it yesterday so even when they get junky looking like this um, there's, it, this has been sitting in water for like a hundred years. Look at the difference in the handle. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Um, hmm. Okay. But, um, anyway, they're still usable. Um, I think they last for easily like a couple dozen years. Like you just could keep using them. They just go. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jarita asked if we think the rounds that we've been painting are too thick for door hangers weight wise. I think they're really thick for door hangers. They're thick, they're, yeah. they're thick they're and good heavy. trays. I mean, you can use them. People are using them. The, um, the D rings, um, they're on the back of this. Yeah. On the video from this weekend, we show how to install these D rings and they're super durable and super sturdy. So you wouldn't have, once you put your wire between, it would hold on your door because doors are sturdy. Otherwise people would get in. And um, so it would do it, but you know, just whether or not you want to have something, it's 18 inches, you know, so if you don't have the door for that, then. We got a glass door, that's not going to work. No, 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 yeah, that would not be, not be okay. All right, let's talk about these colors. So I'm gonna go into, um, so we've got streaky colors, which you're probably not gonna be able to see the screen from here. I've got number 44, number 17, and number 12. And so I'm just gonna pop all four colors, including 79, on my palette. Tell me again, 79. 12, 79, 12, 17, and 44. And then after you do that, if you can move those back over to the right yeah. so they're not from your palette. Okay. I got you, Steve. Yay. All right. 
So we've just got some different colors and I'm gonna go between the two of them. And so this is gonna be how you um, make the wood streaks on your board. The number one thing, I think I harp, I think I'm a harper, sorry, um, is if you want to make straight lines with your tools, if I have my board like this and I'm trying to make a straight line right here, I'm gonna run in, even if I <clears throat> wasn't <laughs> shapely, um, I would still run into my body. You're just gonna do it, right? So if you're pulling your arms straight in, and then your shoulder, I'm feeling my shoulder kind of do a weird thing. If you're old enough to remember how they taught handwriting in the old, olden times before computers, you had to move from your shoulder to do the beautiful handwriting. Um, it's the same thing with your paintbrush. So when you want to make a straight line, turn your board. Okay, so now when I'm doing this, I can get that movement and notice I'm not, my elbow, my arm is not touching this part of my body at all. That's very important. And then the other thing is to grab yourself a straight edge. So we have been selling, um, in the supply chain shortages of doom, um, we have been selling these long strips as um, pallets because stencils are washable. And so we cut this strip. This is a from our tall porch signs. We manufacture right here in the United States. Um, veteran owned, woman owned business. Just saying, give us some like thumbs up on that one. But um, so we manufacture right here in Ohio. And that means our scraps are here in Ohio. And so we had a lot of this and we could do smaller things, but we have a machine that we use for the small stencils. It goes really fast and it doesn't take this material. So we don't want to waste the time and blah, 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 like too much information. But if you cut these down, they make perfect pallets. And so that's what we've been using them for. And then you can wash them. If, if I had a sink that was right here, I could do that a lot with there. I tend to throw mine away, but... These are super cheap. They also make great straight edges. So that's what we're gonna do today. And I am gonna cut it shorter so it's not so unwieldy. So we have you, we have in the past shown you three ways to paint fake planks. So now this is going to be our fourth way to paint yes. faux planks. Okay, so I'm gonna start out without this and I just need to get some paint colors going, okay? So first thing I wanna do is dirty my brush with my base. So I'll have just a little bit of that base on there. It's all about the base. No. Ah, no trouble. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go into our grayer color, which is number 12. I'm just gonna pat it off. I just really want just like a touch of paint on there. And then we're going to streak, get my angle right. Just gonna streak. And you notice I'm going super soft because I don't wanna watch this, okay? Watch this, guys. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna get a big, bold thing. I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. So just dance around, and I can dance around in that same place. So I just want some streaks. Just gonna start building some streaks here and there. I'm getting a little bit of a eyebrow up there, so I'll use a little bit more control. I will show you how to fix all those things. And notice that my streaks are not going the same everywhere. They're not going all the way down the board. I'll flip it over and I'll just pick up where I left off. This is gonna be a layer game. And you're gonna find that you want, when you start, you'll find that you do this every now and again and you'll be like, ah, but it's an easy fix. Ask me how I know. What you wanna be careful about is, I'm gonna show you on here and then I'll kind of wipe it off, is don't get your arm in this kind of movement right here where you're making a little swirl. You wanna make sure you're going straight up and down. Um, a lot of people um, have astigmatism. Um, they, things are easy to get crooked if you have that. And so be careful with that. And so if you find everything kind of being crooked, that's when you're gonna pick up the piece of mylar, especially. So I wanna get this even and I'm gonna show you how to patch that mess right there. 
Oh no, I made a mistake. So if it's fresh, just wipe it off. And then feather and fix. Okay, so how to fix this. We're gonna go backwards with our brush into the original color. I'm gonna blot. Once you get more and more paint, you wanna blot. Okay, so we're just gonna go over that. And so it's like makeup on a freckle. You just want to give it a little dab and then you'll have your um, coverage. Okay, and then we can blend that in just a little bit better. Sometimes it's nice to take, <coughs> God bless you. Sometimes it's nice to take your glasses off so that you can get a diffused look at what you're painting. Oh. And so that's a really good tip as well. And sometimes if you have something that's detailed, if you take it and you put it across the room upside down, um, then you'll be able to see it better. And then if you want to use technology, take a picture of it, flip your image upside down, and then it tells you, it shows you way more than if you're upside right because your brain fills in a lot of details. Okay, so we got our first um, amount of details. Now we're going to go into um, number 44. And then we're just gonna give it some streaks of number 44. I'm gonna start making it a little bit stripey because my example is very stripey. And then that's a big mistake right there. Heavy handed. I am definitely, I don't even know if you can tell by my personality that I would be a heavy handed person. I think that one's just a given. Those could make nice knots. If that's they could, fun. yeah. Steve says maybe nice knots. I'll have to look and see if we can, if I can find it. I know you have a video where you have showed how to paint knots. Yeah, knots are fun. Okay, now I'm yes, going into exist. number 17. I'm going to go over here next to that like error that I talked about just a minute ago and see if I don't layer it out, if that makes sense. Ooh. Ooh, that's a yucky. Okay, so I don't like this one because it's not organic looking. So I'll take my little water bottle. And then I'll just feather it off. Okay, so water is your friend if you use it when your paint is fresh. Oh, Janet asked, could you use a chip brush? Um, you probably could use a chip brush um, if it was a firm enough one. I haven't done the work on that because we are so in love with these. Yeah. Um, chip brushes can be really crappy. I don't know if that's a good word we're allowed to use, um, but they can be cruddy. There you go. Find your alternate <laughs> vocabulary words. Um, but they can also be really good. So it just really depends on, you know, I don't know who's got, who's got good ones. Let's ask our... Yeah. our our guys here. Okay, so feathering this stuff in. Notice that it's just really a layers game. We're just going over and over and over, and then I'm gonna go backwards, tap dancing all over the place. Start getting a little bit heavier. Um, one thing to watch for, I just watched this one do it. This was my one before this one spot, which means that one was probably still wet. Wet paint and wet paint do this to each other. They grab on. And so it's super important as you get to layering, protect your brush. I'm just gonna put that under that paper towel. And I hit this with my blow dryer. So the paint is, the paint is super um, thin and scratchy and all of that, but we want to make sure that um, if it's damp at all, it will grab that paint and it'll make you a big blob like that one. I think um, <clears throat> Carol just posted my favorite comment ever. Ever? Ever. I usually find it easier to paint this type of background after a couple glasses of wine. <laughs> Yes. Favorite comment ever. Yeah, it's really important if you can figure out a relaxing place to be. Um, 
putting on a movie, um, music, something that you enjoy that you don't have to watch is a great way to just be distracted and, and just go. And so then you just kind of build your layers. I'm gonna go ahead and pinch out the paint out of this because I'm building up a lot of thickness so that start things will start getting heavier. <clears throat> Notice there's no water in my brush. I'm gonna go back into the cream color and we're gonna do some makeup. I'm gonna break up the makeup. Anything that I don't like, I'll diffuse. And then I'm gonna show you how to use, oop, hi, bloop, straight on over. Okay, so what would we do about that? I'm gonna make it go straight and then I'm gonna feather it in with another color. Okay, so why don't we go ahead, I'm gonna dry and then we're gonna use that stencil, um, the Mylar. The Mylar tool. So I want to share, um, when we got, can you by any chance reach one of the Minwax um, water-based stain cans? The cans, yes, yeah. I can do that. So when we went and got the stain and we used it for the wood pyrography, what's it, shoshugiban, shoshugiban. Um, I went and got a whole bunch of products and I discovered the Minwax wood finish, which is water-based and they make this in like a couple hundred colors. And I believe it's only available at Lowe's. That's what it said on my brochure. I don't know if that's true. Anyway, I am kicking myself in the pants about not getting these in wood colors. Because what I would love to do is take a wood color over the top that's sheer, water-based, and just tint it. And I think everything would suck in and be really beautiful. So I really want to see what that looks like in the future. I will be getting those. Okay. So we are going to use this tool. The nice thing about the tool is the up and down of it is gonna be straight because it's laser cut. So we can totally put that here. That's my cut edge, so I don't wanna use that edge because um, I probably am not a laser. Yeah, is this my cut edge? Yeah, this is my cut edge, okay. This is the laser edge. So we want to go here and we're going to take our brush and we're just going to right down the edge, give it a little bead of plank and then you can take it and move it down the line. Carol says, I found that stain at Menards also. Oh, good to know. Great to know, actually. They do have a Menards pretty close by. Yeah. Well, an hour. Everything's an hour. <laughs> If you don't like something that you've done when you're doing this, use your finger and smear, and it just makes a really good look. Look at how good that looks. Isn't that amazing? Like it adds so much to have that little bit of line. I'm using different colors. I'm moving my way up and down the pike. I'm just using that sharp edge of my sponge. Wow. Ta-da! Love! Not measuring. In case you don't know me, that's like my... <laughs> that's who I am. I will break the tool. I will do the thing. I will test. But I actually, that's what makes me a really good tester is there are no rules. Okay. Decide where you like things. We have some positive comments here that people are loving how easy this is and yeah. loving this technique. It is really forgiving. Like this um, finger blend technique is super great to do. And then one last one. When you get to the edges of things with a long straight edge, you got to make sure things line up um, at your flat spot. And I think I'll just use what I have. Carol says that she is not a measure either, and it drives her business partner nuts. Carol, I am your business partner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, you don't know. It's so true. Carrie is the, the perfectionist, and I am not. 
Okay, so I want to add a little bit more heavy to some of the different things, and then we're going to move along. I'll feather those guys in. Ooh, hi. I've got another trick up my sleeve. I cannot wait to share in just a minute. A little bit more of number 79. Yeah, I think it's time for the trick. Okay. So we have played in all the colors. We have washed them back and forth and we have a couple spots I don't like. So what are we going to do? Dun, dun, dun. Sanding block. Sanding block to the rescue. Okay. The neat thing about a 60 grit sandpaper is this is as coarse as you'd want to go to, but it will leave scratches straight up your board. And so what that does for you is it creates one more layer. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over here, straight up and down. Now that I have these lines on here, I can line up my sanding block and make sure I'm staying straight. And we do want to arch because I don't want my elbow to hit my body on that either. Okay, and I want to really pull through and make it streaky. Jarita says, measure, measure. Um, Jana says that she has used the chip brushes from Walmart. Nice. But when she uses them, she holds on to the bristles instead of the handle mm, to be good, stiffer good and have chip. more control. Yeah. And she says she also offloads if she's using a chip yeah, brush. Yeah. Chip brushes can be a little... Good info. Okay, so did you notice, um, if not, then if you go to YouTube when this gets posted... Is it posted there right away? What? Yeah. Um, the video is yeah. there because mm -hmm. it's just live. Okay. Um, so... If you go backwards, you know, a minute, then you will see that this was one of those mistake areas and I drug the sanding block through it and it did exactly what I wanted it to do. It shaved it up, made it perfect and streaky. So now this is another problem area. So we'll go here. I think each of these, this one's probably pretty good, but each of these could be perfected with sanding. So see how that's making those little streaks right there. And then I don't like this one. So I'll just go and chisel it out. Isn't that fun? So you're basically kind of deleting. It's like going backspace, backspace, backspace. Control Z. Control Z, yeah. So our friend Kat asked a very carry question. Uh-oh. Um, don't you have a wood grain stencil you can use? Yes, we do. Yeah, so we if, do. if this makes you nervous, we have a wood grain stencil. And this one is listed individually by size. So I would recommend just getting on the website and searching wood grain stencil. And we have, I know we have a 16 inch, a 9 inch, and a 15 inch. So you could use the 15 inch on this. And it appears to be a repeating pattern stencil so that you could use it on a portion, move it over, use it on another portion, and then you can... Yeah, the wood grain stencils are um, super good. This is more of a weathered board look than a wood grain look. Um, so, and then notice here, I'm um, going to just so I can pick up my sander and show you before I do that. I think I turned this around, and so this is nice and faded, but this is all really strong. So this is my equalizer, so I can go on here. Anyway, so wood grain is going to make um, everything look like a board that's not painted, and this is to look like a board that's been left out in the rain and the dirt and the snow and the sleet. Um, and I want to give a shout out from Carol to the guys today. Carol says compliments to the camera work today. Yay! So good job, guys. Aren't they great? You guys, um, we are blessed beyond, beyond blessed. Um, today we have both prior brothers here. <laughs> prior boys. Okay, so now we can put our details on top. So on this one, we could put the kitchen conversion um and totally do the lower side of the thing if we wanted to we could do the upper the lower i kind of don't think i want to spend the time to do this one and go to our next example um why don't you guys let us know in the chat if you want to see this done or if you like got it from that it. and then i'm going to pull out number four way number four. and then you can see what we're going to do with that and you guys can answer carrie and then she will say whether we're going to do this after we get done with that yep but this is how you make the grain of the wood. So many things you can do with a plain board. 
I love it. Okay, bringing the big gun over. Okay, we have a cutting board. So what a great present, what a great thing to have in your kitchen to have your cutting board and then you can cut on one side and you can totally um, put your kitchen conversion on the opposite side. So that is just a wonderful thing. This is from Ikea and um, it's an offset design. I think we've had them for a couple of years. They may not still have the same design. And um, I've got this out because of this and I'll show you that in just a second actually. So we'll just put this off to the side. Um, but on the cutting board, you could put the whole ding dang diddly thing and just kind of center that puppy. And then, but if I want to center to everything, my little um, bloops over here, this little decorative greenery stuff, really just kind of goes to the edge. And so I'm probably gonna leave that greenery off. And I probably gonna leave this greenery off as well. So I'm good with my words. And so now I need to look at measuring. Oh my God. Jarita said, I would love the measurements conversion on a decorative cutting board. And then said, you pulled out the cutting board just as I said my comment. <laughs> like how handy is that? Okay, so this. And then on, when you painted the first one, did you use the 5 8 brush or did you use a smaller brush? Do you know? Uh, the black and white one when you painted? The, this the brush? Big, yeah, you used just the biggest brush. Okay. This is... Yeah. Yes. Somebody's Cindy, eyes don't work from that distance. Yes, Cindy asked what size brush you would use on the small text. Um, the 5 8 work just fine. but as as you're doing one color. If you're doing one color. Um, but you could also, this is a good time to pull out the smaller brushes if you have mm -hmm. them and you don't know what to use them for. I'm going to use the small brushes in our video this weekend because we're painting tinier things. And it just kind of helps, especially if you're painting different colors, keep you safe. Yes. Um, this example on a cutting board was a super beautiful brown and this is like a little bit of a green brown um, i'm gonna put this out and i'm gonna mix i'm gonna brush mix and this is number 31. okay and then we go into this so i'm going to number 31 i'm going to black 31 and uh 17 together and I'm gonna brush mix to see if I get what I want. The black is to darken it, this is to richen it, and this is to brown it. Is that rain? It sounds like it's rain. It sounds like it's pouring to beat the band. Okay, so I want a richy kind of brown, and then I'm gonna really offload. Okay, and then we're going to swirl. Okay. You can get really good pictures on your camera if you put the stuff inside the range of... <laughs> I know, right? Isn't it crazy how that happens? So cool. It'd be amazing if we had the desk taped off or something. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Okay, let's take a peek, a little sneak peek. Ooh, pretty. Okay, so... Kind of looks engraved. Yeah, that's the idea with this oh, color is to get a, like an engraved looking um, thing. I'm on a delay here. So when she said, ooh, pretty, I'm like, let me see, let me see. Okay, I am not doing these. So we're getting out our, and I always do this. So if you guys catch me, I hope I don't do it. I always tell myself I'm not going to, and then I do it anyway. Oh, better idea. Um, the multi-masker would work perfectly, but it's not permanent. So I want to make a little like, nope, don't go here, Mark. Yeah, smart. And so instead of remembering on the multi-masker, which would be fine if I could not go crazy and just do it. Let's be realistic here. Yeah, right. And then we just mark those off, and then I'm like, no, don't go here. Okay. And so now we are able... 
If you have an area that's super thin and you want it to stencil and it's not because it's super small and tiny, then give it a little stipple. I think I heard you stippling across the building. I yesterday. did. I did a lot of stippling again. Her arms are still we're sore. Using my left arm and like that muscle's huge today. But we're this weekend we're doing some small things. So we used the small brush and we did some stippling and it worked very well. Yeah, on your skinny lines, um, it is really a good idea yeah, too. Yeah, it just it seems to me easier to get just into gets the nooks into the and crannies. Hole. Yeah. And, I'm glad you had to stipple today. <laughs> Same. <laughs> well, it kind of just, it kind of makes me feel better. It like kind of justifies that I did it on the weekend video and you're, you're doing it for the same reason today. Yeah. Yeah. This is a lot of little skinny stuff here and getting that coverage over the light areas is kind of where I'm stippling. So I've got a really white area of my board. Mm -hmm. I don't want that to be like light print and then right. dark print so I want it even so I'm giving it a little even really when you're brush mixing and stenciling you really have to offload so much I'm gonna take a little peeky poo did you do the middle one up top um maybe not <laughs> So one thing I love about when you're doing a stencil that's this big and you're trying to go and do all of it is that you, unless you're using white or a really light color, you can typically look and be like, okay, there's not brown on that middle jar. I yeah. don't know if I actually painted it. That's what peeking is for. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm such a peeker with my stencils. I know I'm going to I'm gonna forget something, not see something, something. So you'll always see me doing one of these and going, you know, <clears throat> and that's how I check. I like to tattletale on myself. Okay, so the little tape lines are <laughs> working really good for me. Seeing if I think anything needs to be more... Darkness wise, I think this needs a little bit more detail. The little lines, that's what you need to stipple for. And you don't want to have to squint at this when you're trying to get your conversion, you know. Okay, up we go. And I realized that we did not have a playlist on our trays. So now we do on YouTube. Yay! And I will go ahead and share that with you. You guys, the playlist feature is super cool because if you're trying to master a technique, seeing it done in a couple of different ways is just brilliant. And so the playlist will gather them in, like you might not know to look for the sunflower video because it's on the tray. Um, we know it's on the tray, so we will make sunflowers as a playlist so you can learn about sunflowers. But then if you wanna know everything that we've done on an anyway tray, we'll do that on a playlist as well. So playlists are magic on YouTube. Okay, what's our um, feedback on painting on the other um, board? We did have one person say they wanted okay. to see it. Okay. I think it would be a, a good lesson to show what it's going to look like over top of it. That's a good idea. We're doing this one in brown. If we did that one in black, it'll show you the diff the little bit of color difference and maybe give you give them an idea of what what color they would like to choose on a similar, because you don't want to get onto a cutting board because you don't really have a lot of wiggle room. Um, talk. Let's talk about cutting boards. And so if we do a lot of etching, if you ever need an etched cutting board, um, we have um, 10 or 11 lasers here. And so we do an awful lot on cutting boards. If you ever need one, you can check us out at boardroom46.com. Uh, and see those. Um, but 
the you don't cut on the lasered side of a cutting board you totally flip it over and do the other side so when you have done this on your cutting board you're not going to cut on your painted side that's why you leave the one side blank and then when you're finishing it you're going to use your um whoop, we're not going to do varnish on that you're going to use your um clapham's beeswax which is a food safe substance in case you decided to use it as a charcuterie board or something else okay reveal time dun 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 La -la. fabulous okay that looks so elegant and so great yeah agreed love 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 okay so there is painting on cutting board if i was finishing this i would let it dry i would use my paper towel and i would apply a wax all the way over wax mm -hmm. waxes are one of the hardest um finishes once they cure so a wax is an amazing way to finish your wood um, and you would not believe the hand feel um, when you pick it up you're going to be like oh it feels like a hug waxing is amazing okay i'm going to put this down and then we're going to go back to this and i'm going to talk about what i was going to talk about just a minute ago can you hand me that board under there thank you okay so i had we were doing a test on something that was really varnished and we wanted to see if I could erase something. And so we had this board out. Um, all of these words, um, we call them background words. And so this was a paper with background words all over it. And I thought that these um, anyway tray inserts, if you wanted to do seasonal, so this is where you'd stop if you were a um, stenciler and you didn't do the art things, right? but then you could take a leaf stencil and you could layer it on top and you could have a really pretty faded little leaf on your artwork as well. So seasonally we have, this is my book of words. So we have so many of these, my little C is grabbing the other guy here. Anyway, we have so many of these word stencils. We have them for all the seasons and you can take this punch you can punch the pattern into, and watch this, my magic, wonderful. They just peel right out. So that's the shape of the stamp. They fit on these little disc ring rings, and then you can punch it in, punch it out, and have your stencils organized by style. This is where my organization comes in. I like to know where I can find my stuff. So we've got creative words, and you could just do an all over background of just creative words. There's Italian words, wine words. Um, we have a ton of these word stencils. We've got um, a French um, language love letter words, uh, winter, etc. cetera. So um, these are really wonderful stencils. So look for our background word stencils. Um, they would be great on these anyway trays. Okay. So we're going to take our stencil and I think I'm still going to go ahead and use the bigger. I don't know that I would want just the teaspoon, tablespoon and cups. What do you think? Um, um, what do you think? You decide. Do do the the bottom portion okay. because we have not we did done that alone. Okay. And I want to actually, actually, let's measure a couple things is From that line to that line is six and a half. And from that line to the bottom is about six and a half. And then our board is, is it 13, Carrie? 13 by 18. Okay. And so, if I put this where I want it, are you longer? It's always painful to watch me measure. Just FYI, I'm aware. I am taking medication, but it didn't kick in yet. <laughs> oh, artist brains. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to include the kitchen conversion and the greenery. So let's take that away. And color I think I'll just do the brown 
And then I'm gonna do the kitchen conversion in that, and then I'm going to put this up under that line and then finish it with this little swirl. What color are you doing on it? I'm, I think I'm gonna do 17. Okay, is it, okay. So it's gonna be similar to what the cutting board mm -hmm. looks like then. Yeah, what did you want? A black, so that you can see. Yeah, I wondered about doing a darker, it. I just don't know if black is gonna to be too cold on the warm. Well, let's see what it looks like with the brown if yeah. we wanna do let's, black. Let's try the kitchen and we'll see. Um, Kat asked, how long does it take the Clapham's beeswax to cure? How long would you um, wait until you put something on it? Well, you're just going to put the Clapham's. No, I mean food. Oh, 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 oh. Um, I do overnight, you know, and then buff it. Buff it out. Okay, let's see if we can see because contrast is going to be a thing. So it's a little tone on tone. So let's maybe if we mix the two, maybe we get like a rich, rich, rich dark brown. Black can be such a cold color. Okay, let's peek. Okay, so see how much easier that is to see. Okay, so we are 17 and 20. 28. A lot of times our paints have so much streaks we can't read the numbers. Okay, and now I'm remembering not to do this part. Kat said this stencil would be awesome on the cookbook. Oh, it would stand be. for a gift. Oh, the cookbook stand. Oh my gosh, why didn't we even think Thanks about that? Thanks a lot, Kat. That's way Kat. number five. We're gonna just start emailing you ahead of time and be like, <laughs> what should we paint this on? Because you're brilliant. That is so brilliant. We're gonna give Kat a prize for that. And I do have some other prizes to give out. However, I can only see a few comments and can't go back. So I will be messaging some of you who are on Facebook and have been commenting, I will message you afterward to get your information so that we can send you a prize. Prizes. And we've already given away a prize on YouTube, so. Yay. You gotta make sure you're commenting and asking questions and sharing and liking and all yeah, the things. Yeah, guys, um, if you can, I know you guys are always really good about giving us the heart and all that kind of stuff. Really, really important. We are a little business. We are like mighty and strong, but we're little. And it's so important if you can give us thumbs up, if you can share, if you can comment, any any interaction YouTube loves. And that is um, online currency, if you will. They're giving us credits for being like busy, if yeah. you will. And we mentioned it's last important. week, I believe, or the, maybe it was the week <clears> before, <throat> that we um, are very close to hitting 10,000 subscribers on you know, YouTube. So cool. And we're gonna be doing a really Huge, ginormous giveaway. It's a big number. Just getting to 1,000, any of you that have YouTube channels, getting to 1,000 is is a kind of a headache because you have no numbers to, to play with. You know, so just that very first, the, the first roll of everything is really hard. So all the love that you can, share with us, please. So I'm making sure I'm going back over if I see something's not solid. Um, can you tell me the measurement of the top of the kitchen conversions to the halfway point um, vertically? Oh, this yeah. like this? Mm -hmm. um, looks to be ish um, eight, eight and a half. Okay. So someone had mentioned the size of this on the cookbook stand mm -hmm. the reversible insert panel for the cookbook stand is 13 by 8 Ooh. so it would yeah. be um almost so you if you didn't include that line mm -hmm. you are at eight inches at so. eight inches mm -hmm. so it would it, it would, would work. fit right on yeah. there and then i think we said horizontally it was 10 inches across because mm -hmm. we were looking at that earlier so yeah that's a really good thanks for checking on that guys Ooh, hi white Smudged through my paint, got some white on there, don't want that. Okay, 
and bottom detail. If you really like a solid base, then you would do a couple of coats of this. Um, because this is kind of a worn look, I'm good with it being one, I think, according to my peak at the top. So see how we put that piece plus this piece, you know, and we just kind of brought it all together so you don't have to, and you could do just like a little ornament with like the, the um, little mason jar and have it, you could almost hang that on the inside of your door. That'd be yeah. cute too. Okay, I'm gonna peek. And see, la la la. Love it. That's so so cool. fun. I love, love, love the streaks. I love all of that. So now that can go right inside of your, um, your anyway tray. You can use these as placemats. You can flip them over. You can totally, they're thin enough that they are perfectly sized for like dinner plates and stuff like that as well. All right, I think. I think it's time for lunch. Whew. Yeah, it's sushi day, guys. That was such a great lesson, Patricia. Yeah. You guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, cutting boards, techniques, all the things um, we love sharing with you. Um, we'll see you on Tuesday next week.